Hey guys, it's Dean Odell with Seven Gables Real Estate and the Odell Group. I had promised that I was going to put some Prop 19 stuff together for you. So part of Prop 19 took effect February 16th. The other part of Prop 19 is going to take effect April 1st. So I am going to demonstrate probably the two most common situations, or at least the most common situations that people will uh, have concerns about Prop 19. And I will tell you where else you can find details. As you can see right here, BOE website, that's the Bureau of Equalization for the state of California. And there's a phone number here for you if you've got some specific questions. But let me go into right now, uh, the most common situations we're going to run across. The most common top, type of Prop 19 examples, and I'm going to use 1% property tax for simplicity, okay? So Prop 19 is the state's way of trying to entice people to move and also get out of that Prop 13 situation where it is capped at a 2% appreciation rate. So we will talk more about that. But as it is now, you guys might not understand this, but if you you know, your house, the property taxes can't go up more than 2% a year unless you've pulled permits and created, you know, more value in it or something like that, then they can, they can raise value based on that. But if you just sat in your house forever, it can't go up more than 2% a year from a uh, tax evaluation point. So let's just use an example that's pretty typical to show you how Prop 19 has changed something. Okay. So let's start with the, uh, the parents, they're leaving a $1,650,000 home, that's the date of death appraisal, to the children that they bought for $250,000 in the 1970s, right? So let's just say they currently pay about four grand a year in taxes because the assessment's grown up to $400,000 on the house over the years. And so that's your factored base value. You can always find your factored base value right on your tax bill, okay? So now what happens, um, in this situation, a common situation, which is inheritance transfer, let's look at the first scenario. The kids say, "Hey, we don't want to. We don't know what we're going to do with the house. Let's just make it a rental." You know, um, you know, we get mom and dad's nice low tax base, and uh, that'll certainly help out with positive cash flow on the rents, and we can see what the market's going to do. Well, state of California is shutting that down. So what they're saying here is, as of February sixteenth, that is when all the Prop 19 transfers that we're talking about right now went into effect. So you can't go back in and, you know, create another, create some kind of trust or an LLC or any of that stuff. I mean, you guys can get some legal information or legal uh, advice, but the bottom line is it's after February 16th. So it's pretty set in stone. If you guys do figure out a way to do it, I would love for you guys to shoot us an email or uh, give me a call and let me know how you're doing that after February 16th. So again, let's just say the kids want to make it a rental. So the taxes are 1% of the value, which would be roughly $16,500 because the date of death appraisal was 16.5, right? That's going to be an increase of $12,500 yearly over the current taxes of only $4,000, right? And that's because the date of death occurred after February 16th, 2021. So let's look at the next scenario. The kids want to make it, uh, the kids want to move into it. One of the kids wants to move into it anyway. They still haven't clarified if it should be one or all, but it doesn't make sense that all the kids will go into it, right? So we're assuming one. There's rumors out there that have said, well, if there's two kids, you only get half the benefit. Uh, we have not verified that to be true. And I do not believe that's true at all. So I'm sure it's just one of the kids. So if you uh, look at that factored face value on the tax bill again, and let's say it's 400,000 in this example, the benefit now it, with Prop 19 is they're gonna give you an additional million since you're moving into it. So now your taxes will not change on the first $1.4 million worth of value. But let's remember in this example, the house was worth a million 650. So that means there's $250,000 more in value that you don't have the benefit of, that's going to be taxed at the 1%. And that means your total taxes would become $4,000, uh, which was the base tax that the parents were paying plus $2,500 or $6,500 total. 
Um, if the property appraised below the 1,450, then of course there would be no additional property taxes. So that's kind of how, you know, that's a typical situation we see on inheritance and how things are going to change. I'm going to show you another scenario now, which is what most people are super excited about is the 55 year old and older crowd, uh, now have a little bit more flexibility to move. Um, you know, the old rules used to say that you could only keep your tax base if you sold. And then if you bought in the first year, you could go up 5% in value. If you bought in the second year, you could go up 10% in value. Um, these are all property tax rules we're talking about, guys. Nothing else but property tax. I'm not talking capital gains. I'm not talking income taxes right now. This is all property tax stuff. Prop 19 replacing Prop 13. So here's how this has changed now. Um, and there are still a few unanswered questions that really need to be clarified, hopefully uh, before people start making their moves here um, coming up uh, after April. So on the move down, there's going to be no change in your tax bill. Um, the question really is, once you do that move down, once you transfer, are you still under Prop 13 or Prop 19 for future tax purposes? That's something that hasn't been 100% clarified in what I've read and heard. And the reason that's important is because it has to do with how they're going to value the property in the future. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Now, if you're going to move up, you know, there's another question. If you only do it one time, do you get to keep your Prop 13 and keep your tax base? And under Prop 13, you can only go up 2% a year on appreciation. Remember, we talked about that. Under Prop 19, it's different. And I'm gonna, I'll tell you why and show you why here in a few minutes. And that's that might be the catch. That might be the devil in the details with Prop 19 is trying to figure out what this, how they're going to you know, value this in the future for certain situations. I mean, if you only use it once, did you really do, are you really using Prop 19 or are you really just doing what you would have done under Prop 13 if you stayed under the old guidelines? My understanding is this is going to wipe out, once you transfer, it's going to wipe out all the Prop 13 stuff and you will be under Prop 19, okay? So, in this example, we're moving up. So let's just assume the parents, you know, are still alive and they want to buy a smaller $2 million condo at the beach. They're ready to get rid of the big family home, all the maintenance, the big yards, all that stuff. They're over it. They just want a small little place at the beach. Well, their house is only worth a million six fifty. They're moving up to two million. That's a difference of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. They are going to have to pay the taxes yearly on that $350,000 in addition to what they were paying on their current home. So that's going to give you, you know, a tax bill of your $4,000 for your existing home, plus the $3,500 you're moving up. That's a $7,500 tax bill on a $2 million home, which is a pretty good deal, right? I mean, that's, you know, a $12,500 savings. So that's, that's tough to be right. So, but here again, the devil is in the details and you know, I, I put here, you know, what else is important to know, you know, about the future valuations of the property after the transfer. And this is what I wrote here. You know, it's unclear if Prop 19 replaces every residential property transfer in the future. So we know the state wants to get rid of Prop 13. They do not like this 2% appreciation cap um, of, that you're guaranteed under Prop 13. So you know, what if the uh, new Prop 19 rules don't change anything for you? Let's just say you're buying down, you're staying within those old guidelines like we talked about, the 5 and 10%, 5% first year, 10% second year, you know, that you can go up in value. I mean, you're not really using Prop 19. You're using the old rules of Prop 13. But if those have been completely washed out by Prop 19, which I believe that's what it states, then, you know, the dark secret I see, you know, with Prop 19, um, is how the future valuations are going to be for tax purposes. And they don't, it's not really hidden. They don't talk much about it. They hype up the whole moving part. But where Prop 19 was capped at 2% appreciation per year, Prop 19 is not. Okay. Prop 19 states the yearly adjustment will be based on the HPI, which is the home pricing index. And that is published yearly 
by the Federal Housing Financing Agency or FHFA. We know how the government loves their acronyms, right? So anyway, so I'm gonna give you an example of how this looks. I'll, I'll share this calculator with you. If you guys do figure out a way to do it, I would love for you guys to shoot us an email or uh, give me a call and let me know how you're doing that after February 16th. So I'm pretty similar to this page right here. And so here's the issue with this. If you look and you say, I need to know what the HPI was, I purchased my home in the fourth quarter of 2019, you know, now it is the fourth quarter of 2020. Well, look at the percentage change, you guys. The percentage change is 7.5%. So <laughs> what happened to that 2% cap, right? So, so let's just say, the HPI calculator, by the way, only goes up to 999,000, which we know in Orange County, we're gonna need better numbers than that. But um, that means that your valuation of your property could go up seven and a half percent or your taxes. So let's just say you have you had bought a house for you know million six fifty or whatever, or I'm sorry, two million dollars. Okay, we went from a million six fifty to two million dollars. Well, this here says that if the valuation went up seven and a half percent a year after you bought it, you know, you would now have another $150,000 in value, which at 1% would be $1,500 a year more in taxes. So they, now the, the flip side of this is if the market goes down and when it goes down, if these numbers are accurate, then, you know, you'll get the benefit of the market going down as well. But you can see in an appreciation market, appreciating market like we've had that, you know, the property taxes could really go up, right? So if you look at the, the calculator here, this is for the state of California, it's for Anaheim, Santa Ana and Irvine, you know, they call these their MSAs, you know, which are different, you know, housing areas. And I went from the fourth quarter, but let's just say, let's just say you would have bought a house, you know, right when the market was turning, which is probably prices were turning right around the fourth quarter of 2011. So, if I purchased then and I kind of wanted to know, you know, fourth quarter of 2020, how much appreciation I had, that's an 82% change. How'd you like your property taxes to go up 82% from 2011 to 2020? That's, uh, that's quite a kick in the gut, isn't it? <laughs> so that right there, my friends, is what you got to be watching out for, this new HPI and you know, are you transferring under Prop 13 rules? Or if you're transferring, are you always under Prop 19? And being that it's only March and this doesn't kick in for another few weeks, these are the kind of questions I'm sure that are going to come up and these kind of things that you need to know based on your situation. You can go to this website, which is the boe.ca, which I have on another page to show you. But this is your board of equalization. There's Prop 19 information in here, and you can contact them and ask specific questions um, for your situation, right? So I would suggest that you do that. You have tax attorneys you can talk to. You have CPAs you can talk to. This is not territory that most real estate agents are going to give you concrete advice, uh, because as we all know, sometimes what the government tells us doesn't turn out to be exactly how we interpreted it, right? So best to go straight to the source, get something in writing from them or explain your situation, because that's the one thing I worry about with this new Prop 19 is how my house is going to be valued in the future if I move, okay? And that's these are the bottom links here. You can see again, probably just easier to Google them and just go straight to straight to their websites. So if you have any questions, post your questions or give us a call. And I hope that helps you out. Prop 19 starts April 1st for the 55 year old and overcrowd. And like I said, for transfers for inheritance and that sort of stuff, estate transfers. That has already occurred. That, that happened on February 16th. They uh, didn't give you much time to change things, get things in order so that you could avoid uh, what Prop 19 brings uh, to the inheritance part of uh, the equation, but it is what it is. And like I said, if you find anybody that's got a way around it after February 16th, let me know. So that's it. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next Test and Talks.